Next, we got some pretty interesting news, courtesy of Variety, regarding my favorite hip hop artists out there and somebody that I really um, rate, Future. Right, I listen to him every single day. I've been a big fan of Future from Day Dot, from Pluto days, and he's just somebody I've kind of followed for a long time. I've seen him perform many, many times live. Um, he's definitely somebody that I regard as a goat in terms of this trap sound or whatever it is that you might call it. But just in general, for being like a really hardworking artist who's able to kind of you know present many flows, he's evolved kind of over the years and just become a real, I think, well-rounded, altogether artist who's able to do melodies, hooks verses ad libs and just everything else in between to an extreme level and i love the lore the stories around him right the the studio stories of people hanging out with him in the studio and him basically recording an album's worth of material in one session um him being in the studio every single day if he's not with some random ig baddie he's in the studio slaving away and kind of putting together a masterpiece hit record that's going to live on and become a bit of a meme and you know essentially feeding from generation to generations to come I'll feed his family sorry for generations to come but this is a pretty interesting development with his business so this is courtesy of Variety it says as follows Variety sorry Future sells publishing catalog to influence part, influence media partners it says as follows influence media partners has acquired Grammy winning Future's publishing catalog from 2004 to 2020 the company announced the prolific rapper's work from those years spans 612 titles including titles of frequent collaborator Drake Life is Good Jumpman um, Kendrick Lamar King's Dead Rihanna Selfish and The Weeknd's Low Life and his own solo hits like Mask Off a source close to the situation tells Variety the deal is in a high eight figures now the thing that's interesting about this is that from what I can understand Publishing is what you would do if you were going to license a future track for like a TV series or if you're going to make a cover record for it or something, right? But Future still owns the master so his record. So he's just sold the publishing rights of it, but he still maintains a big chunk of whatever money that's going to be generated from those records still, which is a crazy deal. So it's kind of like double dipping, but not really because he's still going to be paid twofold. So he gets paid a lump sum for the publishing, but he still holds a master's and he gets whatever he gets on a monthly, yearly, basis that comes in for people that want to use permission of his art of his work or whatever sample blah 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 going forward now the figure is another interesting part of it because if i'm not mistaken being a fucking future geek that i am i do remember there being rumors from a long time ago that future signed one of the craziest deals in a record industry has ever seen this was like 2015 ish times right um i think around that sort of time i think they were speaking about it in terms of the same way that birdman um did with kind of cash money or young money back in the day where he signed a crazy crazy deal that essentially you know he was able to make multi multi multiple millions which is why you know he kind of lives you know the, the lifestyle he basically lives right an absolute boss and you know lives very very lavishly and I think at the time, someone said the record industry basically got duped into giving him that deal and then they closed the doors. I've never given anyone that kind of deal again. But I remember the only thing that came close to it was the rumors of future. But then I remember him confirming semi on some Atlanta-based radio station in like 2018 that he did actually sign another deal in 2018, I think, um, that was worth somewhere a region of like 50 million, which is pretty insane. And then after that, to sell, to sign a deal for 50 million, on the masters of your records and then sell the publishing which i've heard is anywhere between 50 to 75 mil is absolutely wild like he's absolutely cashed out and there's still the possibility of him further down the line you know maybe a decade later um deciding to sell even more of his publishing because 2004 to 2020 is one thing but for the most part you'd say the majority of his work that people would actually give a f about in terms of publishing would be from about 2014-ish onwards that'll be when futures kind of you know was actually started to gain prominence in kind of um the wider culture and people started to take notice of him so and considering how prolific he is in terms of his work his output and stuff he could easily make back those records that he put out i know there's some monumental records on there like life is good jump man rihanna selfish king is dead with kendrick ma but there's still an opportunity for him to make some classic records going forward and especially this new version of future because beforehand this ver the version of future who was at like, popping pills and sipping on lean is maybe a bit different but I feel like this version of Future, similar to The Weeknd, they talk a big game about doing however many drugs they allegedly do, but there's no way people like The Weeknd and Future can perform or can produce quality work to a level that they produce and get effed up every single day. I just don't believe it. It's not true. So that's why I'm also kind of... Um, 
I don't hold any doubt that when they do end up kind of getting back to the studio and really putting work together, they're going to be able to kind of cover, you know, cover whatever they might have quote unquote lost off the back of it. So it's a pretty clever deal. And I also think it's interesting overall that we're seeing so many artists nowadays selling their publishing. It's becoming quite a common thing that you're seeing with a certain artist kind of deciding, hey, I want to sell the publishing of my work. And maybe a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's a lump sum that you're going to get that you're probably never going to see again. You're not going to kind of turn that money down. And there's no guarantees in the, in the music industry that things remain the same. You know how messed up streaming, you know, streaming was meant to be the great kind of equalizer. The record industry came in and still found out a way to kind of swindle artists out of their streaming numbers and whatnot or diminish the amount of money that they get from that. So there's no telling what may happen in the next 10 years with the industry and, you know, and the technology in general that would kind of, you know, mess up a, an artist's ability to kind of make money from their art. And it continues here. Renee McLean, influence media partner and founding advisor, said Future is a cultural icon. He continues to be the blueprint for impact and success in the music industry and has reinvented music in ways that no one has ever, ever expected. It's a rare to find someone who moves music and culture at the same speed, agree, and it's distinct vocal and melodic style. His prolific career and continued popularity more than 15 years into the game is a testament of his undeniable influence and a contemporary music and a cultural landscape. We're honored to partner with him. So that's true, actually, what they're saying here. I think a lot of it has to do with getting legacy quote-unquote acts to sell their publishing because you know their stuff still holds weight you know their stuff still moves people still give a crap about it but not so much the sort of like you know fly by night come easy come easy go sort of artist so that's why maybe this could also be a wise a kind of cautionary tale to up-and-coming artists coming up-and-coming artists for the most part that they maybe shouldn't shouldn't um you know spend a lot of their time trying to produce viral hits for the moment that you maybe concentrate on their artistry and create music that will test us stand the test of time because you never know what will happen down that down the end of the line right someone might come in and decide that they want to buy your masters or your publishing off of you and you know they're only going to buy stuff that's worth it and obviously stuff that kind of connects with people in a big and meaningful way it continued here. Future added, I put everything into my music and I want to make sure that these are in good hands. And as I thought about the next chapter of these songs, I'm proud to partner up with Renee and the team at Influence Media and send um, the signal that this music has timeless value. My music is my art and these songs represent some of the most precious artwork in my career. 100% agree, man. He, the way this man paints sonic canvases like no other. Toxic sonic canvases like is the king. Um, he says we consider the future an artist of all of, of the ages. He resonates across the spectrum of demographics. We're so excited about the partnership. It's fitting addition to the growing repertoire of our top tier talent and promotes our forward thinking mission. During my tenure, Epic Records, I was able to work with the support futures throughout his pivotal career. Now that influence, now I influence, sorry, it feels like fate to be able to collaborate with him again and alongside the dynamic partners to protect. Um, his legacy and works said so influence media co-managing partner Lynn Hazan so really incredible to see um, it says here um, 16 years a studio album so is that is that all that's covered in it oh no it's just home overall but I think it covered how many music it covered yeah 612 titles overall it covered so it's a pretty substantial amount of work that he's kind of handed over for that money but in general well done to him and well done to him.